I'm a physician. That's, uh, I'm a surgeon. Uh, I, I love what I do. I wouldn't do anything differently. I just uh, feel sometimes that uh, the work we do uh, is uh, so mediocre. Uh, for the days we live in, for the times we are in, uh, I uh, am a geek of sorts. I love technology. I'm a technophile. Uh, I was blessed to learn about uh, Singularity University, and then I went to the Future Med program, and then uh, that uh, sort of uh, morphed into the current exponential medicine. Uh, in there, I learned about some amazing technologies that could really help us, help me take better care of my patients. One of them was Google Glass. We've talked about Google Glass uh, for quite a bit. Uh, I was uh, able to get a hold of a Google Glass uh, unit, uh, did the first operation with Google Glass. But when I first saw what Google Glass could do and how Google Glass could improve, how we connect and how we communicate, I thought this has got to be a tool that, that is going to be the next step on, on, on how, how to interact in medicine. Uh, I've been bringing the story of Google Glass all over the world. I was in Nepal. I, 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 this is the second the most, uh, the highest lama in, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in Nepal, in Kathmandu, and I put the Google Glass on him. Uh, he, he was uh, marveled. Uh, Google Glass is, is you know, a simple tool. Do Just do streams, you make an incision, and you many other things, okay. and, uh, your point of view, your perspective of the surgeon. So that kind of tool in the operating room is something that we need in order to teach, to teach students, to teach patients, to teach colleagues. It's like the rear view mirror. You only look at the screen when you need to know what information is there. But the ability to stream with your perspective is something amazing. So that uh, got me to become sort of a communicator. I created a, a website, a blog that is an educational blog. Uh, I started being pretty active in Twitter as a tool to interact, to communicate, to connect with patients, providers, with students. Uh, and it has been a, a, an incredible journey. Like I said, what we do in medicine, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of because the times we live today shouldn't be the way they are. Healthcare is in, is, is in trouble. Hey, healthcare is a, is a basic human right and it's very unequally distributed. Trouble, we could speak for hours on what the causes are. The trouble uh, uh, go all over the, the, the place uh, uh, to what the cause is. But the main problem is how we connect, how we communicate. We have lost the human connection in medicine. We heard about the empathy deficit. You know, it's one of the worst problems in medicine, the lack of empathy between providers and between providers and patients, between providers and relatives of patients. That is a problem that we need to fix. And I think technology is a tool, globally speaking, to help us do that. But only if we use that technology in a smart way, if we think differently, if we think outside of the box, if we innovate, we need to tear down the system, we need to disrupt the system, we need to be creative. You know, Dr. Topol's uh, the disruption, uh, the, the, the creative disruption of medicine. That is the basis of what we, I think, need to do. And uh, there are many ways of doing that, you know. Uh, uh, Martin Cooper, the 70s, created a, a tool to communicate that broke all, all known idea of how we communicate. That has migrated to, you know, today, something like the, the, the iPhone 10, which is just an incredible tool that has a potential that we, we can't even imagine yet with the technologies that's embedded in that computer. I think that, that it's not really a, a radical evolution. It's, it's more a revolution of sorts, but it's the natural evolution of the technology. I love the little video that I did some years ago of how we go from huge computers that crowded a room to computers that fit in our pocket. And they're so powerful that they can do things that, that we, we barely use the power embedded in those computers. So, I think that, you know, as Jaffe well uh, shown, uh, you know, we are in times where all this science fiction stuff can become real. We can manipulate data in front of our eyes. And this is not sci-fi. This is reality. Today, now, yesterday, a year and a half ago or so, we can do this. But we need to Poor think smartly of how to do it. assets over the real world. And we talk about HoloLens. 
hope you have tried the HoloLens. It's an amazing tool, an amazing tool to play, take pictures of your cat if you want, but you can radically change how we do any profession. But in healthcare, the potential is really only limited by our creativity, by our imagination. You know, HoloLens projects a reality in front of you. Let's call it virtual reality, let's call it augmented reality, let's call it mixed reality. It doesn't really matter. In education, you know, this is how anatomy labs were in the 1700s, you know? Awful looking. Imagine the, not just the, the monetary economic cost of that, but the human ethical cost of, of, of something like this. The traffic of human bodies just for the sake of, 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 of learning. Mortus vivus docent, you know, the death teaching the living. You know, that's sort of the, 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 and that's the way we still do it in med school. I bet you go to Stanford and there is a cadaver lab in there that is very similar in a way, cleaner and sleeker, but the same as we did hundreds of years ago. So my great, great grandfather in Venezuela, he was a surgeon and, and this is the, some dissection lesson in there, you know, not even gloves and it, it's, it's awful. We still do it the same way, very, very much the same way. And you know, the death teaching the living, it shouldn't be that way, it should be now technology teaching the living, technology teaching us, rather than using a, a, a cadavers, for example. You know, simulation. We a, a have this uh, thing in surgery where you see one, you do one, you teach one, right? You probably all have heard that. But that is something that can be radically changed. The way we see one, the way we teach one, if we use technology in a smart way, we can radically really improve from way, uh, things, uh, on the way we do things. This is the HoloLens. This is from Case Western Reserve, one of the early applications of, of HoloLens. You know, creating an anatomically correct HoloLens. cadaver in front of you. A cadaver that you Welcome can really interact inside with. Heart. This is Inside Heart, an application from Animaris, a company in Germany that I have been advising, no Anna. financial relationship. I'm super excited Using to give you the same technology the human heart. to anatomically and physiologically show and see the to students, right away on the to providers, but also to also patients scan, what the body looks like the in a 360 degree, in a holographic way, you can walk around that heart, you can immerse yourself inside the heart and see the valves in the inside, you can even see how All things move, voice commands are on the right panel. anatomically, physiologically, the medically correct. So you see these applications and you say, wow, so this is Medivis, a company that I'm also, I've also been working with. And Medivis is also disrupting in HoloLens. It's an application to get rid of all those cadavers, all those bodies that we use to dissect anatomy, to learn anatomy. Anatomically correct, that's the key. It's a digital representation of the real anatomy. And you can play with that in a way that you could never play before with real corpses. It's really a revolution indeed. Medivis can go from education to diagnosis to treatment. Imagine viewing radiographs for, for physicians. We've done it in 2D for, 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 for decades and decades, and even you can manipulate the images in 3D in a flat screen. It's not the same as having a hologram, a 3D figure kind of that you can interact with, and then you can use that image to therapeutically to treat that particular patient in the OR. So we're not there yet. We're not there yet treating the patient based on this, but we are going to get there because things are exponential. We are going to get there for sure. There's no doubt. And it doesn't matter the hardware, the software, it's going to happen. It's going to be the way we are going to learn, we're going to diagnose, and we're going to treat patients. So this is a surgical uh, a theater using a oculus, immerse yourself in the real anatomy of your patient. This is a real angiogram of the, of the, of the brain. And, and you, rather than looking at an x-ray or a picture or trying to see where the tumor is, you can immerse yourself. You get this mental map of where am I going to cut? What am I going to dissect? I've got to be careful with this vessel or that vessel or this nerve or that nerve based on a real fantastic voyage inside the body because of the technology used in a smart way. Shafi talked about this, the global problems in healthcare. It's a real, real problem. You know, areas of war, areas where surgeries and deliveries are performed in the desert, in tents, in jungles, you know, war, destruction. That inhabitates all this learning. We have to use our imagination in ways that we have not done it before. AR Kit, the new platform, like AR Core for the, for the Android, you know, it's a fantastic platform, barely tapped. It's just starting. And if we use AR Kit in a way that, and this is not working, there we go. So Annie Maris came up with this app for the phone, the iPhone, and then basically it's the same thing, but it's on a device that 
billions of people have all over the world. You don't need a HoloLens. You can Welcome to basically Inside in your own smartphone download an app and Hi. learn about the heart. My name is Anna. Like you've never done it before. I'm super excited it's to give fun. you an insight. You have haptics, you can heart. feel that Choose organ different conditions and see the beating right in your head. If your little old lady has atrial fibrillation, now, she heard that for years, she never heart. understood it until she grabbed the heart and she feels that heart beating irregularly and seeing her heart in, in, in ways that she could never seen it before. So it is amazing, it's fantastic. It is truly a fantastic voyage of sorts. So I took this picture on a, on a new hybrid ORs. Now this technology needs to be integrated into what we do in medicine in, 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 you know, in the year 2017. It's stuff that is it's fascinating. We're working on an inside body. Inside body because we're gonna try to create organs, every organ in the body. We're focusing in organs that now have wearables that can connect the organ to the digital world. So you see those lungs. I took this uh, while you guys were doing yoga there at the beach. I was in one big stone in there. And the, heart, the, the, the lungs are, are breathing, and it's all anatomically correct. You, you get there, and you can go around. I didn't go around because I want to fall off the cliff. But it's there for you to learn. And then we wanted to hack it. We wanted to integrate what you see not just with some artificial data there to teach you about irregular heart rate or normal or uh, we wanted to integrate it to the sensors that we all wear, you know, Fitbit or the rings or the aura or the motive or the Apple Watch. So you can integrate that beat of the heart to your own Apple Watch. You can integrate it and you can see if your heart is failing or not. Imagine a life core cardia, you know, integrated to that and you can tell when so and you can visualize. Imagine you're jogging or you're in a gym and you can see your heart beating, you're competing against the other heart that you're beating, and you see that beating, you want to go faster. You know, it has enormous potential. Enormous potential for learning, enormous potential for many other uh, things that we can't even imagine yet. This is a spire. You can check your breathing rate, and connect that to the actual organ that you're displaying. You have the muse, you have a brain, and we could have a brain, and you could see, depending on how you are excited or you're relaxed, and you're learning to meditate, then basically you can see those areas lighting up in your brain. The potential, the possibilities are such amazing that, that it's, uh, it's just uh, uh, unbelievable. So technology, it's not the technology, it's how we use the technology. Is the smart, the clever use of technology to help us become better humans, to help us become better caregivers. Again, empathy. You know, the best tool in med school should be empathy. You've got to teach empathy. Technology can help us with that. Technology can certainly make us better physicians, but you need to also become, you know, the other. You need to feel what the other side is feeling. I'll leave you this picture using technology. When I saw this, I almost cried. I thought, wow, this is incredible. You know? It's about that, being better humans through the smart use of technology. Thank you very much. Are you good? Mm -hmm. well, one question. So you came as a participant. That was just like four years ago, right? 2013. Right, yes. right. So uh, if you're going to go four years from now, what's your one prediction of where this will be? Because right now, this is not really democratized. It's not so available. What's it going to be in four years? I think that mobile technology for this holographic renderings is going to be everywhere in any industry, in every industry. Right. In healthcare, it's just going to be magnificent. I right. think. And before you started this, you were not an ARVR expert. You were just a surgeon. I'm just a surgeon still. Right. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dan. Right. Pleasure.